Meyer Lansky was born in Grodno, Russia in 1902. His early years were marked by the harsh realities of life in a small, impoverished town. The Lansky family, like many others, struggled to make ends meet and the future seemed bleak. In 1911, seeking a better life and the promise of the American dream, the Lansky family immigrated to the United States. They were part of a massive wave of Eastern European Jews fleeing persecution and poverty. They settled in the Lower East Side of Manhattan, a neighborhood teeming with poverty and crime. The streets were crowded with immigrants all hoping to carve out a piece of the American dream. The tenement buildings were cramped and unsanitary, and the struggle for survival was a daily reality. Life was hard for the Lansky family. They faced discrimination and economic hardship. Meyer's father worked long hours in a garment factory, but the wages were barely enough to keep the family afloat. Meyer was forced to drop out of school at a young age to help support his family. He took on various jobs, from selling newspapers to shining shoes, anything to bring in a few extra pennies. He found work on the streets, running errands and doing odd jobs. The streets of New York became his classroom, teaching him the harsh lessons of survival and the value of street smarts. It wasn't long before Lansky fell in with the wrong crowd. The allure of easy money and the camaraderie of street gangs were too tempting to resist. He quickly learned the ropes of the criminal underworld. The streets of New York were a breeding ground for criminals. Petty theft, gambling, and protection rackets were common, and young Meyer was drawn into this world. He saw crime as a way to escape the grinding poverty of his upbringing. Young Meyer was drawn to the allure of easy money and the excitement of the underworld. The thrill of the gamble, the rush of a successful heist, and the respect commanded by gangsters were intoxicating. He began by running small-time gambling games and engaging in petty theft. His sharp mind and quick reflexes made him a natural at these activities. He quickly gained a reputation for being both clever and reliable. His sharp mind and street smarts quickly caught the attention of local gangsters. They saw potential in the young Lansky, recognizing his intelligence and ambition. Lansky's criminal career took a significant turn when he met Charles Lucky Luciano. Luciano was a rising star in the Italian Mafia, known for his ruthlessness and strategic mind. Luciano was a rising star in the Italian Mafia. He had a vision for organized crime that went beyond the petty street crimes of the past. He saw the potential for a nationwide criminal network. He recognized Lansky's intelligence and ambition. The two men shared a common goal, to build a criminal empire that would dominate the underworld. The two formed a partnership that would change the face of organized crime in America. Together, they orchestrated some of the most significant criminal enterprises of the 20th century. Together, they would build a criminal empire that stretched from the streets of New York to the casinos of Las Vegas. Their influence extended into legitimate businesses, politics, and law enforcement, making them some of the most powerful figures in American history. The 1920s saw the rise of prohibition in the United States. The manufacture, sale, and transportation of alcohol were completely outlawed. This created a golden opportunity for criminals like Lansky and Luciano. They saw the potential for enormous profits in supplying illegal alcohol to a thirsty nation. Lansky and Luciano established a vast bootlegging network. They smuggled liquor from Canada and the Caribbean into the United States. Their operations spanned multiple states, supplying speakeasies and nightclubs across the country. Lansky, with his sharp business acumen, was instrumental in managing the financial side of their enterprise. Lansky's role went beyond mere bookkeeping. He was a strategist, a planner, a master manipulator. He understood the importance of alliances and the need to minimize violence. He knew that bloodshed was bad for business. Lansky's cool head and calculated approach helped him navigate the treacherous waters of the criminal underworld. As Lansky and Luciano's power grew, they recognized the urgent need for greater organization within the criminal underworld. The existing structure of independent gangs constantly vying for control was chaotic, inefficient, and often led to unnecessary bloodshed. Lansky envisioned a more unified and structured criminal enterprise, one that could operate seamlessly across state lines and avoid the pitfalls of infighting. This ambitious vision led to the formation of the National Crime Syndicate. Lansky, along with Luciano and other prominent mob bosses, brought together various Italian-American, Jewish-American, and Irish-American gangs under one powerful umbrella. This unprecedented alliance aimed to reduce violence, expand criminal operations, and significantly increase profits for all involved. 
The syndicate was structured like a corporation with a clear hierarchy and well-defined territories. This organizational structure, largely influenced by Lansky's business acumen, helped to stabilize the criminal underworld and ushered in a new, more organized era of crime in America. Section 4. The Commission Maintaining Order in a World of Chaos To maintain order within the newly formed syndicate, Lansky and the other bosses established the Commission. This was not just a casual gathering of mobsters, it was a meticulously planned organization designed to bring structure to the chaotic world of organized crime. This governing body composed of representatives from the most powerful crime families, acted as a kind of criminal court. Each family had a voice and decisions were made collectively, ensuring that no single family could dominate the others. It mediated disputes, enforced rules, and ensured the smooth operation of the Syndicate's various enterprises. The Commission was the glue that held the Syndicate together, preventing internal conflicts from spiraling out of control. One of the Commission's most significant achievements was the establishment of a code of conduct for mobsters, often referred to as the Ten Commandments. This code was not just a set of guidelines, it was a binding contract that every member had to adhere to. This code outlined rules against harming civilians, cooperating with law enforcement, and interfering in the businesses of other families. It was designed to create a sense of order and predictability in an otherwise unpredictable world. The goal was to maintain order, minimize bloodshed, and protect the syndicate's interests. By adhering to these rules, the families could focus on their business operations without the constant threat of internal strife. Lansky, known for his diplomacy and strategic thinking, played a pivotal role in the Commission's success. His ability to navigate the complex web of relationships and rivalries within the Syndicate was unparalleled. He was often called upon to mediate disputes and negotiate truces between rival factions. His calm demeanor and sharp intellect made him the ideal mediator in times of crisis. His ability to see the bigger picture and find common ground made him an invaluable asset to the Commission. Lansky's influence extended beyond mere conflict resolution. He was a visionary who saw the potential for a more organized and profitable syndicate. Under his guidance, the Commission not only maintained order but also expanded its influence, reaching new heights of power and profitability. Lansky's legacy is a testament to the power of strategic thinking and diplomacy in the world of organized crime. The Commission's success was not just about maintaining order. It was about creating a sustainable and profitable organization that could withstand the test of time. Through careful planning and strategic alliances, the Syndicate thrived, becoming a formidable force in the criminal underworld. The impact of the Commission's work can still be felt today, as it laid the groundwork for modern organized crime. Its principles of order, cooperation, and strategic thinking continue to influence criminal organizations around the world. In a world of chaos, the Commission stood as a beacon of order, proving that even in the darkest corners of society, structure and strategy can prevail. The legacy of Lansky and the Commission is a powerful reminder of the importance of leadership and vision in any organization, legal or otherwise. Section 5. The Elusive Mobster, Lansky's Dance with the Law Meyer Lansky, a name synonymous with organized crime, was a figure shrouded in mystery and intrigue. His life was a complex web of calculated moves and strategic decisions. Despite his deep involvement in organized crime, Meyer Lansky was notoriously difficult to catch. He was a mastermind who orchestrated some of the most significant criminal enterprises of the 20th century, yet he managed to stay out of prison for most of his life. He was known as the mob's accountant for a reason. Lansky's financial acumen was unparalleled, and he was instrumental in setting up sophisticated money laundering operations that kept the mob's finances under wraps. He preferred to operate behind the scenes, manipulating events from the shadows. Lansky was like a grandmaster in a game of chess, always thinking several moves ahead, ensuring that his interests were protected and his enemies were outmaneuvered. He rarely involved himself directly in violence, preferring to use his intellect and cunning to achieve his goals. Unlike many of his contemporaries, Lansky understood that brute force often attracted unwanted attention and could lead to downfall. Lansky was a master of disguise and deception. He could blend into any environment, adopting different personas to suit his needs. This ability to transform himself made it even harder for law enforcement to pin him down. 
He cultivated an air of respectability, dressing impeccably and avoiding the flashy displays of wealth common among other mobsters. Lansky's appearance was always polished and he moved in circles that gave him an aura of legitimacy. He surrounded himself with lawyers and accountants, using their expertise to shield himself from legal scrutiny. Lansky knew that having the right people in his corner was crucial to maintaining his freedom and continuing his operations. His ability to evade justice for so long was a testament to his strategic brilliance and his ability to manipulate the system. Lansky's understanding of legal loopholes and his network of informants kept him one step ahead of the law. He understood the inner workings of law enforcement and used that knowledge to his advantage. Lansky's connections within the police force and his ability to anticipate their moves made him a formidable adversary. He was a ghost, a phantom, always one step ahead of the authorities. Lansky's life was a constant dance with the law, a delicate balance of staying in the shadows while pulling the strings of the criminal underworld. His legacy remains a testament to his cunning and strategic brilliance, a man who played the game better than anyone else.